All right, good morning. I've got uh, a couple of things we'll kick off. One is on the log and the other is not. Uh, the first one is the robbery that was on the log. This was about 3.15 this morning a.m. that we were called. The victim was initially in the 4600 block of West 41st Street. There's a gas station there. We ended up finding out that this robbery took place in the 5000 block of West 40th Street, so not too terribly far away from that location. But he was in a vehicle. Um, some of the details aren't quite there, but he was in his vehicle. He was initially in the passenger side, and there was a woman that was in the driver's seat, and they had stopped in that 5,000 block of West 40th Street. There was a guy that then came up and was trying to get the victim out of his car. At some point, the woman got out. The man that owns the car, our victim, hopped over to the driver's seat. The suspect then went around the car and was trying to pull the driver out of his car or the owner out of his car. The uh, victim was not, he basically held on, so he was not pulled from the car. And then the suspect used some type of object and stabbed the victim uh, at least two times. I'm not sure the exact amount. The victim had some minor injuries from that. We're not sure exactly what he used, but after he, he felt that he was being stabbed, and so he basically allowed himself to be pulled from the car. The suspect and then the woman then jumped in the car and then drove away. And it was a short time after that, had an officer that found that car uh, near Madison and I-29, and they went to stop it. The car didn't stop, but there was a pursuit that then happened. And eventually the car crashed near, uh, let me see, I think it was, it was actually crashed in Augustana's campus, but I think it was, um, let me see if I can find that quick. Uh, like University Place and Menlo Avenue, somewhere about that area. University Place along Augustana it would normally be 28th Street, but I think they must have somehow annexed that road or something like that. Anyway, so basically like 28th and Menlo or University Place and Menlo, but that's where the crash took place. Both the suspect, the driver, and then the woman passenger, they took off running, but they were caught. The woman had some warrants, so she was arrested on that. No charges from, from this incident. The suspect was arrested for robbery, aggravated assault, aggravated eluding, grand theft, hit and run, and then there were some other traffic tickets as well. So the victim did not need any medical attention. Um, it was not, no serious wounds from, from the stabbing. Yep, he is, last name is W-A-K-O, first is B-O-R-U, middle is G-U-Y-E, and he's a junior. He is 35 from Sioux Falls. Victim is, <coughs> excuse me. That is. The victim is thirty three from Sioux Falls. Yeah, and I, I was just looking here. They didn't. They must have updated something. It looks like she was also charged with uh, aiding, aiding and abetting. Uh, I didn't have that before when I was reviewing this report. But her last name is Foolbull, F O O L B U L L. First is Tawny, T A W N E Y. Middle is Marie, M A R I E, and she's twenty. Uh, this is from Yankton, South Dakota. She's 20. 20, yeah. So she had a few warrants and then also aiding, aiding or abetting. Well, 
the so the victim was with uh, Tawny full full bowl. How they ended up together, um, that I guess I'm not really clear. But anyway, they were in the same car to get, he had been driving it around earlier and then somehow met up with her and then she was driving this car and, the and the victim was in the passenger seat so then that's when they ended up stopping in that 5,000 block of West 40th Street and, and then the, the suspect was there so the suspect tried to get the victim out of the passenger seat he wasn't able to do so the uh, Tawny the driver she got out of the car the victim hopped over from the passenger seat to the driver's seat, and then the suspect went around to the outside of the car and was trying to get the victim out of the car again, basically a second time. That's when the stabbing took place, and eventually he was able to get the victim out of the car. Both the suspect and uh, Tawny, the passenger, um, got in the car, and then they drove away. Yeah, right, and then it was ended up there was a pursuit that happened and they crashed in, into, uh, I think it was a tree in Augustano's campus. Sorry, I was a little confused. Yeah, no, it's, Do you know yeah. If, uh, this, the whole incident itself was, was planned? That we don't know. You know, I mean, that's, yeah, I, th we don't have details on that. Um, you know, if it was, and we, we've seen things before where, you know, was a setup, you know, something was planned to, to rob or steal something from somebody. So in this situation, it seems a little odd, um, so you could probably infer a few different things, but this is what we know. We don't know what led up to that or why that robbery took place. Do you think drugs, drugs were involved in any way? I, I didn't see anything mentioned of the drugs. The, the victim didn't have any, he hadn't been using drugs or alcohol. I'm not sure about the suspect. I didn't see anything mentioned with that. Good on that. Okay. Um, the other one is not on the log, um, but this was an arrest that was made last night. It actually happened Sunday evening. So we had a, a woman, uh, 18 years old, was jogging on the, the trail at Dunham Park. Initially, she saw a car drive past, and um, let me get that pulled up here. I think the, the car was a little distinct. I think it had yellow rims, if I remember right. But anyway, she said the, the guy driving that car um, said something to her and kind of gave her a look and she didn't think anything of it and continued her run. A short time later she saw the car was parked and saw this guy was now walking on the bike path towards her. As they got closer he tried to say something to her and he was speaking in Spanish and she didn't understand him. Uh, he then started running next to her and grabbed hold of her and basically put her in a bear hug and then during the process, he ended up groping her, which she described as very intentional. She thought that he was, well, I think he was trying to get her off the trail and seemed like he was trying to take her to his car. She started fighting and yelling and ended up elbowing him and he let go of her and then she was able to get away. So she ended up calling police later on. Initially, she wasn't sure if she wanted to make a report or not. In the meantime, uh, we had other officers that uh, identified that car. They ended up seeing that car and identified the driver of that. And so we uh, essentially developed a suspect but still didn't have the, the victim that wanted to make a report. So then she ended up um, getting hold of us at a later time and, and uh, basically said after things had calmed down and, and she realized the severity of that she did want to make a report. So he was found last night uh, about a little after 7 p.m. and then he was arrested for stalking, simple assault, and attempted kidnapping. And do you want his name? Last is Lopez Cruz, L-O-P-E-Z-C-R-U-Z. -E First is Josue, J-O-S-U-E. Middle is Daniel, D-A-N-I-E-L. And he's 20 from Sioux Falls. Yes, he's age The victim is 18. 18. Yep, from Sioux Falls. Do you think they knew each other in any way? No, there's no connection. Yeah. This, this was a completely random act.
It was Dunham Park, which is the 1300 block of South Marion Road. And you said this happened Sunday evening, do you have a time? Around 8.30 p.m. is when it happened. Um, well, she had, uh, let me see if I can find it, because she initially called, she called right away. Oh, so she did call this, but didn't. Well, wait a minute. Um, let me double check this. I think that might have been a... Yeah, so she called uh, just about 9 p.m. on Sunday and basically said that that's what happened, but she wasn't sure if she wanted to make a report at that time. So she did report it right when it happened. And then it was, uh, I think it was the next day that she decided she wanted to make the, the police report on, on the incident. He was arrested in the 500 block of North Todd Place. And so kind of after she made kind of that initial contact with the police, you guys are kind of developed this place. Well, I, yeah, I think, I mean, that's exactly what happened. I mean, she, she made that initial uh, reported to police, but wasn't sure if she wanted to, to make a, a actual report on the crime that took place, which that happens. I mean, we can't make somebody be a victim. We can't make somebody make a police report. But so in this case, she just needed some more time. Um, it was probably right in the moment and she wasn't maybe as aware of the severity as she was at a later time when she had a chance to process it. So uh, in that meantime, we had officers that had some information out basically just to try to identify the driver of, of that car um, in the event that there was a report that was made at a later time. So in the meantime, once she made that initial contact with police and explained it, officers found that car and they were able to identify the person. And I think it was the next day that she ended up making that report. And so it was fairly easy to determine the suspect and then um, just had to find him and, and he was arrested. W whether to make a report or not yeah, I guess kind of benefits of that. yeah well I mean we you know we encourage people if they're a victim of crime to report it to police really as soon as it happens and I mean there's depending on the crime there could be some evidence that is there that a later time could disappear um, you've got witnesses that could be around uh, you know that we get a lot of information from surveillance cameras and people have different periods of time when they save that. So the longer you wait, some of that evidence may disappear as well. But, uh, you know, outside of that, you know, obviously trying to find the person that was responsible, holding them accountable. I mean, that's obviously the main goal. Um, but we do have people from time to time will call us and tell us about a crime that happened, but then say, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to make a report on that. So it's up to the, the people to decide if they want to make a, a criminal police report or if sometimes they just want to let us know something happened and just to kind of keep an eye on things. I know I think it was uh, the week before last week, uh, two false news released images of uh, somebody who had uh, an indecent exposure at uh, Yankton Trail Park. Has uh, he been found yet? Um, that I don't remember. I think um, I know there were some tips that came in. I'll have to check with the detective on that. I don't, unless I can find it here.
might be it. We don't have any arrests or charges at this point in time. I'll have to talk to the detective to find out if if we've got any suspects or leads in that case. Okay, on the log, I really don't have much else. Um, the uh, aggravated assaults, we had... Um, one person was threatened with a knife, that was a domestic. Another one, somebody was threatened with a machete, no arrests on that one. Uh, the other was a strangulation case, no serious injuries from that. The one assault is a simple assault, domestic. The burglary was a TV taken from a house. The disorderlies, uh, one of them was just a report, the others were trespassings. Family offenses are more reports. The frauds, ID thefts, credit cards, bill skips, larcenies, a few unlocked cars, um, nothing concentrated in one area. We did have one of them had a gun that was taken from it. No big quantities on the narcotics. The rape was a report. The sex offenses were other reports. Simple assaults were more domestic. The suspicious activity that was created in error, so I don't have anything with that. And the vandalisms, nothing big. A little bit of everything kind of all over the place. So, of course, there's only five of them, but anyway. Anything else? Okay, thanks.